Welcome to the podcast, kids. Today's episode is brought to you by the Grand Rapids Table Soccer Club. It's a brand new uh, table soccer club in Grand Rapids. Just founded yesterday. Um, And its mission statement is to play table soccer. Um, Check it out. That's the club I belong to now, Jim. Wow, how did you not fall off the table? I don't understand. I know. know. Oh, when I'm playing table soccer? Yes. Oh, I could explain it to you, but (laughs) that's a whole other show. Uh, And then um, today's episode is also brought to you by the uh, Weon L4S light box. Oh, nice. Right? Yes. You can buy one of the... Weon is spelled... H U I O N L four S LED light pad. You can buy it at Amazon for forty two something, and it'll change your life. That's right. And Huian is also spelled L U J A N. Okay. Welcome to the Pod Cave. My guest is the award winning filmmaker um, Jim Luhan. He hangs out with Madonna. From time to time, right? I do. Um, she hates me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> welcome to the pod cave, Jim. Thank you. Is it pod cave or cage? Pod cage. Uh, that's on the weekends. <laughs> okay. Right? And that's just, the whole other. I don't, I don't want to fight anybody. <laughs> um. Uh, you come. You've been on the show before. You were my inaugural guest. I was. Yeah. What number show is this, by the this way? This is like number sixteen or something like that. Oh, sweet. Right? 16. Roll, rolling right along. That's right. Um, you're you're a friend. I would call you a friend of the show. I am. Um, you're you know kind of the. Uh, you helped me found the show. I'm an associate of Paul Pate, but I'm a friend of the show. So, I don't know how that works. You you know what you are now? You're a peer of mine. We're I peers am. Because I, too, am an award-winning filmmaker. I only associate with award-winning filmmakers. So, that's really a good coincidence, Paul. Very nice. <laughs> but yet you are a friend. Congratulations. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. Why, thank you. Amazing. And let me guess. Was it your first time out ever uh, yes. submitting something? You better put the light back down. Now you look like washed out man. There you go. Um, your yeah. first time out ever submitting something and and you won? Yeah, yeah. Does that sound familiar? You, Does that bring back memories? You've won every film festival that you've ever entered. You've taken top prize. That's amazing. <laughs> That is, you're batting a thousand. That's awesome. <laughs> no, I won best animated. I didn't win the film festival. Well, best animated film. So, right. animations are films too. <laughs> Animators are people too. Yeah, we're we're filmmakers too. <laughs> I'm very excited that there's another independent animator out there in Michigan. I love Michigan, by the way, too. I want to get a T-shirt that says that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really excited that that you're making uh, new films and continuing to make films. I think it's right. really cool. That Your stuff's great. Uh, thanks, thanks. I know we're gonna, we're going to talk about the art of filmmaking and how I can be better. I can be more like Jim Luhan. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you're already award winning. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me about your award winning experience. Your show, can we? My award? Well, I don't want to brag, but <laughs> let's just say uh, uh, that. Well, I don't know. I may have won one or two in my time. <laughs> Hello there. Um, this is the Nomi, by the way. Oh, man. 909 Best Movie 2013, 909 Film Festival. And I'm retired from that festival. I- because I just I just keep winning it. <laughs> no, it, it's um, that's I've won a, maybe a couple of awards in my life, but this was a very cool one. Um, it was best animated film for Prince of Pomona, oh. and 
And what Which, else? Uh, you want to know something weird? Yes. I swear. What is the his his real name? Purple Ron. Ron. Purple Ron. Yeah. I grew up with this kid, Ron. Okay, he went to church where I went to church. Mm-hmm. And then they moved, his family moved away. And uh, he came back, they came back for a visit when Ron was about like 16 or something. And mm-hmm. Ron was a huge Prince fan. Did he move to Pomona? And I don't know where they moved to, but that guy could be... I'm smelling a lawsuit. Yeah, that guy. I, maybe you met the same guy and just decided to do. You could be suing me for stealing his identity. Then, <laughs> wow, no, Purple Ron. That, when, yeah. I wanted to name him something like with the Prince pun to it. Right. And um, Darling Nick did didn't really <laughs> that didn't cut it. Purple you know. Ron. So yeah, purple. I think that was that was um, anyway sidetracked. So, Prince of Pomona, you entered, this was the first film festival you entered? No, 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 no. I, I honestly don't remember what the first film festival I've, I've entered was. I know I, I didn't win anything the first time out. I think that's you. Your soul. Yeah. Your, your well, let me defense. tell you, now, in case, like, uh, people don't know, you've got about 50 films. Short made. films. Mm-hmm. Yep, short films. Um. You've you've got an incredible catalog of really funny, quirky, great characters. Thank you, Paul. Um, and I don't know if I told you this story or not. I actually told Deacon this last time I was on. I had like insomnia about you know a year or two ago and was up late and watched uh, Counterclockwise and Foreverland. And I was telling Deacon that movie changed my life. Really? Did it really? <laughs> yeah, it did. I mean, I that was the first time I was like, oh, wow, look at this. You know, um, I want to do that, you know? I thought you were going to say you started taking drugs, but okay. <laughs> so like, No, that's you... why I had insomnia. <laughs> <laughs> See, you did the same thing I did when I saw Mike Judge's stuff on, on, at Sick and Twisted. You thought, look at that. I can... I can do that, like, right. but I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way, like inspired. Right. I can do that. Yeah, right. I want to do that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to do. I want to do the stuff that I do, you know. Right, right, but, but just the, that format, that level, that yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be uh, Pixar. You know, it could be right. made looking really DIY, as long as it has heart and soul and character. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what made me, yeah, that inspired me to embark upon this animation thing. And I re- one, one thing I really like about your animation from the get-go is that you just go for it. Like, with your stuff, you're kind of fearless with it. I like that a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, you're not trying to, you don't play it real safe or real, like, um, rigid, you know? Like you use these crazy ca- camera angles, and and you take chances when you're making your films, and I like that. I really it's like where I, I I think I hope to try to do that as my as well. Uh, yeah. So anyway, that was. Uh, Hold on. Let me shine off my award. It, it wasn't glistening enough. Okay. Can you can you? Uh, <laughs> so. So was that best? That was best in. Uh, was that yeah, the, the, it's the nine hundred nine film festival. It, it, it's at Pitzer College, out in Claremont, California, which is a really nice college. And my friend Eddie runs the festival, but it wasn't fixed. It was an audience choice, and um, I won a couple of different things there. I I showed the year before. I showed Hard Crumbler, which is a cartoon that about bikers and stuff. And then the year before that, I showed Freak Daddy. When Freak Daddy was still, oh, is it new? I don't know. But And then um, Freak Daddy's been stalking you ever since. He, he Freak Daddy's right there. I put him here strategically for this. Normally, he's up there. <laughs> oh, but, there's uh, there's uh, Ron Rossi. No, it's John Henry Unicorn, the Reverend John Henry Unicorn. Oh. I need to do a Rod Rossi. Yeah. Rod Rossi, the one-man posse. 
Yeah, I thought that was him up there in the sun. I put feet on my shoulder so I could have them like this. Uh, so how do you get those uh, characters like that? This. My wife helped me make this. It, we just got a piece of styrofoam. Yeah. And, and it's got a little base on it. Oh. I, these are for something, some kind of Christmas decoration or something that goes on there. So we got the piece of styrofoam, I, and this is a printout, and I used um, glue, some kind of glue, and then we stuck stuck them on there and cut, and then with an exacto knife. I That's think my, my tech, dude. I can never yeah, accomplish that. I think my wife did the exacto knife because I would have cut my fingers off. But that's how freak daddy. You son, that's how freak daddy get made up all in here. <laughs> so. Oh man! Now, see, I, I'm jealous of you because not only are you uh, friends with Madonna, but you've got the voice thing, man. You got great, great uh, voice skills. I don't know how you do that. Um, comes from years of being a jackass and, <laughs> and being wow. a kid and trying to make people laugh and doing I, voice. I can't do, I don't do imitations that well. No. You know, that's the, if you ask me to do an imitation of Christopher Walken, forget it. It'll sound like Freak Daddy, but. <laughs> you know who does terrible imitations is, uh, um. Me. <laughs> I do uh, terrible imitations. Uh, Will Ferrell. He does he terrible does. imitations, but he does imitations anyway. Yes, though. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. I think they're bad on purpose. <laughs> right. Okay, little sidetrack. Will Ferrell, you know how he does George Bush, and he is a famous imitation of George Bush? Right, right, which is like the worst George Bush ever. Yeah, but you know who he doesn't even have to do an imitation because it's the same person? He could do Jeb Bush. Like, <laughs> Just walk out on stage and Jeb Bush is Will Ferrell. Like, I can't believe it. I watch him. I go, that, he looks like Will Ferrell. He's like, oh, you're in the headlights all the time. So there's my little sidetrack. Uh, okay. Um, what, hey, back to our awards. Mm -hmm. uh, I see something across your shoulder there that's glaring over. Oh. Okay. And I'm not talking about light, lit up by the lava lamp. Yeah, what, what might that be? Can we get a closer look at that? My lava lamps are going to fire up any minute now. This is the... Uh, <clears throat> you are showing... Hey, look, let's make our awards kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, they would actually need to go like this, I think. You know, Welcome like, to the Narcissist <laughs> Hour. <laughs> <laughs> the self love hour, and I don't yeah. mean that. <laughs> wow, this I am your narcissistic so host. So, though, for those of you listening to the audio, I just realized because I do listen to your audio podcast, um, we were holding up our awards and making them kiss each other. So, for the for the visual impaired people, but they're they're um, they're fully clothed and yes. fully dry humping. So. <laughs> anyway, this is my Made in Michigan Film Festival Best Animated Award. Uh, went to Frank and Moose, which is like a really cool, hip town, I guess. I don't know if it is. I don't know what's cool and hip anymore. But, um, hey, wait, I just realized something. Madonna's from Michigan. Yeah. Yeah, I can't, I can't, there's a whole Michigan connection. You know, I got to tell you something too. As a little kid, as a nine, ten year old kid, for some reason, I cannot tell you why, I was fascinated with Detroit. Oh yeah, like, city of Detroit. Yeah, like I had a Detroit Tigers uh, baseball hat, um, the Detroit Lions. Uh, I wanted a Detroit Lions T-shirt, not just the sports, but like the city. And then like was my superheroes. Sometimes I would make my superheroes. When I would make little comic books, I would make them from Detroit. Right. The name Detroit, I guess. I don't know. Um, was it because of Axel Foley? I think it was because of Jack White. Pretty sure. Jack White? From the White Stripes. So oh. They're from Detroit. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, well, I'm educating you on Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who, who's from Detroit is my main man, Tyrone Dickey. From the... Uh, Stuff and tie hats. What? <laughs> that I should, I've been wanting. I'm gonna send this to you in the mail, man. Oh, I gotta see that. That's awesome. 
fashion killer. Yeah, and this is uh, Diane Penn. Is one of is a real dude. He's a uh, cross awesome. cross dressing mime. He's the main villain. <laughs> Wait a minute, that sounds like one of my cartoons. That's I know, right? L L listen, this is a this is a true story. At the end of the book, okay, I got a page here that has all of the characters that are in the book. God. These are real life people, and then here's a quote. This is Ty. Um, well, he's not on here, but this is a quote from Ty. Uh, yeah, I need that book now. <laughs> he says, "I said, um, okay, I got all these characters, and um, it describes each one of them. You know, a real short blurb. But then it says down here, all of these good people enrich the real lives of Steph and Ty. They appear in this comic book as fictional characters." As Ty likes to say, I know a lot of funky people. I am funky people. <laughs> and that is the truth, man. Wow. That's <laughs> the, awesome. That is really cool. Yeah, him and his wife are in Detroit. Your artwork is amazing, too, by the way. I really like your, your comic artwork. I, I, your, the novel that you sent me, The um, uh, City, uh, I'll say Rust, Rust City. City. Is it, yeah, it is Rust City. Yeah. yeah, it is amazing. Like, your artwork's so good. People uh, need to see it. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yes, they need to buy it. They need to send me money. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever thought about doing a web comic? Yeah, I actually did one. That's when I started. I did uh, Turkey Creek University. I gotta see that. Where is that available? It's like in the archives. It's it's. Um, did it post anywhere? Like any of the web comic sites or? Anything? Yeah, I had it on. Um, um, Man, that was years ago, though, Jim. I can't even. Was it, um, hot teen, hot teen cheerleaders .com? Yeah, that was. <laughs> that was where. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I can, you know. It's in the archives. Yeah. Um, yeah, actually. I, yeah, I, I, I we'll really, do a search. On that. We'll do. Yeah. If you're listening to this podcast, do a search on. Was it Turkey Creek University? Yeah, I don't even or know if that's. Or as I like to call it. Yep. Yeah. I don't even know if that's out there anymore. It's about college kids, and uh, it was yeah yeah. I think I've developed a, a bit. My artwork is a little better. I'm hoping. A long time ago, in a galaxy far far away, I thought about mm. doing a web comic. Back when I thought I might want to do comics at one time, because <laughs> what better way to, to tell a story? And yeah. um, well, I, it, it's hard. <laughs> comics are rough, man. Comics are you need you need a certain skill set to do comics regularly and do them right. You know, it looks it's like juggling. It looks easier than it is. It's like Liam Neeson. I've got a set, certain set of skills. Uh -huh. <laughs> and yeah, oh, what, yeah. Um, there was some. I haven't followed web comics very much lately, but back when I started, I, mean, I was digging like all the people that did like stuff outside the comic book rules, you know, because you, were, you weren't tied to a book, a paper page, you know.